Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode answers the question, do Skype lessons actually work? And how you can go about teaching or taking Skype lessons. And I'm here to say they absolutely do work. I would say they're about 95% as effective uh, as live lessons. The only thing that I sometimes miss um, from uh, live lessons that I don't have in Skype lessons is the ability to play alongside my student um, for helping with Rubato. But a lot of the, like that can be solved by making your student a quick recording on your phone. Or writing in your student's music can be solved by using an iPad. Um, there's a great app called Fourscore um, that you can pull up any piece with and you can write on the music. There's a bunch of different colors so you can say, hey, this week watch places in pink or green. Um, so I am recording on my iPhone today so that I can move uh, around and show you these different uh, d mechanisms. Having said that, I would highly recommend, if possible, doing Mac to Mac uh, for Skype. And if you can afford it, getting a desktop 21 and a half inch iMac um, to the student's 21 and a half inch iMac. I've never seen it be clearer with that, but it is extremely clear still with iPads and it's extremely clear with MacBook Pros. Uh, I do teach quite a few students with PCs and it still works great, but the resolution is not as good. Even like fully loaded HPs or, um, they just have never worked quite as well as Mac to Mac. So that's just a little side note. Let's uh, dive in and take a look at Skype. Okay, so here you can see my setup. It's right to the side of my piano. I'll back up so you can see this. I like it uh, far back enough that you can, the student can still see your upper body and your face. Um, as well as your hands, because uh, that's important in demonstrating a lot of times <clears throat> based on, oh, here's how you have to hold your arm or whatever. Okay, now I use a Yeti Silver Edition microphone, and a couple of uh, pieces of advice on this microphone is it has um, these different patterns on the back. I like to set mine to the third one over. It looks like an upside-down heart, uh, which is cardioid. Um, for about $120, that's a great microphone. So all you do, let me grab this cord. So you just, it's just a USB microphone. So all you'll do, if you're really not tech savvy, <laughs> I'll walk through this. You just plug it in, let's see. You just plug it into your USB right there. If the light is on, it means the Yeti is on. If it's blinking, it means that it is on mute. Also, leave the Yeti standing straight up like that. You don't want it down like this. A lot of students point it towards their sound. Actually, the sound enters in right there, so keep it like that. I like to keep the microphone on a separate table from the piano because the bass can sometimes cause the microphone to distort um, or kind of cause an extra rumbling in there. Uh, just a piece of advice, so hopefully my contacts don't mind that I'm showing you guys this. I come up to Skype and I would go to preferences. Okay, I come over here and I make sure the microphone is set to the Yeti stereo microphone and the built-in output and the speakers are uh, as you would expect right there. So um, that means that the sound will be coming out of your computer speakers and they're going into the Yeti. If you have some external speakers, uh, you can go ahead and plug those in. Additionally, I would not recommend using a Bluetooth speaker because there's a slight delay and it really screws up with the audio. Having said that, sometimes setting the blue Yeti microphone, um, Silver Edition, right up next to the speakers is not the best idea. Sometimes I'll put a little stool over to the side here and I will um, just set it on that. That's the stool I usually teach from for my live lessons. Lastly, uh, I like to use the app Fourscore on my iPad here. Let's take a look. So it looks like this. So Fourscore, okay. And as you can see, you can write in, I don't know if this is paired, but I'll show you guys if it is. So yeah, it is. So you can write in, you can come up here, you can erase things. Um, so it's really handy and the nice thing is is when I'm done teaching a lesson I Just come up here and I press share and then I write I click annotated PDF 
and it will generate an annotated PDF here, and then I can send that to my student so I can uh, email that to them or text that to them or whatever. Um, additionally, two more things is if you don't, <clears throat> if you aren't able to find a certain score online using um, IMSLP, Dot org. That's a great resource. And by the way, a quick tip on IMSLP, just Google whatever piece you want. So this would be List Rhapsody number two, IMSLP. So you just Google all of that. So you would click on this first result here. And uh, the stuff in pink is perform our performances, and the stuff down here is what you want. It's the sheet music. So you can have your first edition right here. Uh, this is a public domain by the Kunkel, Kunkel Brothers. I don't know. Um, I don't want that one. Sebastian Mills, the New York edition. I don't like that. Raphael Josafi, that'll be decent. Um, Emil von Zauer, that is a good edition. And then um, you have all of these. And then, like, this one's the best, this Budapest edition, Editio Musica but it's non-public domain US, so uh, <laughs> use that at your own discretion um, if you're going to do it. I think for educational purposes, I believe it's okay, but I'm not going to get into legal stuff on this channel. So um, let's just uh, pull up this email von Zauer right here. Okay, it says your download will continue in 15 seconds. Continue here to download. The nice thing is, check this out. Open in four score. You see that? So you just open that up, and then it will open it in four score, and now you have your score. Very useful tool. Um, and then, like, you don't have to do anything special. You can just start writing in this as well. Oh, it stopped pairing. I'd have to repair this. Oh no, it's it didn't. It, it was just not selected. So, um, so you can write in that, and then make another annotation copy for your student and send that to them. So. I don't really feel like Skype is a big disadvantage. A lot of people will say that Skype doesn't work or, oh, that's so, um, that's so impersonal. But I really do think this is the way of the future. It's unbelievable. I teach students all over the country. I actually have a lot more students on Skype now than I do here in Utah. Um, I teach somebody in New York. I see, teach someone in Pennsylvania, someone in Indiana. I teach a guy in Canada every week. I teach people in Florida, teach a lady in Ireland, I teach a lady in Hong Kong every week, I've taught people in Australia, I've taught people in Africa before. Um, so I've taught people on uh, five continents, um, I guess it's six now, uh, now that you include Africa. So it's pretty amazing. Haven't taught anyone on, in Antarctica yet. Uh, but maybe someday. You just have to have a good internet connection. Additionally, make sure, if you can, to plug in Ethernet. I still go over Wi-Fi um, because uh, I've, I used to not have a cord long enough to reach a super lame excuse. Um, but if you do plug into Ethernet, it is very useful uh, as well. It's a little faster. I haven't noticed huge difference in speeds, but people do recommend you use Ethernet cables if possible. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I would recommend. Oh, just a couple of glitches that sometimes happens with Skype that you don't need to worry about. Sometimes there will be a Skype update in the middle of your session. All you have to do is hang up and call back. Sometimes the microphone will get overloaded, like if your student is playing something really, really, really loud. Um, when they go to talk again, since that is a condenser mic, all it's doing is it was compensating for all that sound. So all you have to do is wait for a few seconds and it will reset. Or if it's not working, you can just hang up and call right back. It takes three seconds to hang up and call back. People make it out like, oh, if we have to reconnect, it's the end of the world. Very easy. Um, other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot of uh, issues with Skype. I love it. Another thing that people love is that they can play on their own piano. Uh, I do encourage people to play on different pianos whenever they can, but sometimes taking lessons in your own house at your own uh, convenience uh, so far as time, very helpful. Playing on your piano, very helpful. Playing, you know, 
at night, perhaps, when you wouldn't be able to, you know, go out and, you know, you have kids in bed or something. Um, like I teach, I have a little baby, and she sleeps upstairs while I teach down here. It's very convenient. Lastly, I do think this is the way of the future. Um, this allows students to connect with teachers that exceed the quality of teachers in their area. For instance, if I wanted to do a lesson with an, an amazing pianist, like someone like, uh, like Bob Ayan, um, I've heard that he does lessons with his students over Skype if they need it, if they're like at a competition and have a question, or if I wanted to connect with uh, my teacher in Michigan and he was game to do a Skype lesson, I wouldn't have to fly out to see him. So it is convenient, especially if both ends have a Mac, especially if both ends have that Blue Yeti stereo microphone. If you're gonna skimp on something, skimp on the iPad. You can get away with not having the iPad. It helps a lot, especially if you're the teacher. You gotta have it, um, in my opinion. But if you're low on funds, the Yeti, you cannot go without. Some people do, but as the teacher, you need that. If you don't have any Mac products besides um, an iPad, I haven't personally found a microphone that plugs into the iPad that I love, but uh, that's better sometimes than having an old PC with the mic plugged in with a poor connection. A lot of times it doesn't work. So the most up-to-date uh, hardware you can get, keep your Skype software up-to-date, plug in a microphone at all costs. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck as you embark uh, on Skype lessons or if this was just uh, in case you want to connect and perform for friends. That's another uh, great use of Skype, is if you have no audience, you can say, hey, can I perform this really quick for you? Your friend could be, it could be midnight where your friend is. They could plug in headphones. You can perform for them. It's amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. You'll see uh, a few icons come up here. You can check out my number one video course up here on the card. Uh, you can check out my website. You can subscribe to my channel or you can watch more videos over here. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.